Hello, welcome to the Run Testers. Uh, my name is Nick, and in this video, Tom and I are going to talk through our kind of our first few race experiences in the Alpha Fly. Obviously, this is one of the really big, exciting new launches this year, along with several other carbon plate shoes. But there's a lot of debate out there about whether the Alphafly really is an upgrade on the Vaporfly, um, and whether this kind of design, this very distinctive design, works for everyone across every distance. So Tom and I have raced a 5K, 10K, and half marathon in them uh, between us. Uh, obviously, there hasn't been loads of races this year, so we haven't had a chance to do multiple race tests. But we're going to give you our first impressions at kind of those distances about whether the Alphafly is like the best shoe for them and whether we're going to be using it next year when kind of the racing calendar hopefully returns to some kind of normality. So 5k was the first actual race I did in the Alphafly official race. I did a five mile virtual race in them and actually quite enjoyed them for that. Um, but in terms of actual real racing, uh, I did a 5k at an airfield. It was the Duxford Dash at an RAF airfield. Um, and I was aiming for a sub-16, my first sub-16. I didn't run it, I ran a 16-12. Um, however, the conditions were horrendous, very, very windy. Um, I did actually win the race. Um, so I'm, generally, I was pretty impressed with how the Alphafly performed, actually. Um, once you're up at pace, you know, it does feel quick. It doesn't feel at all like you're hindering uh, your speed, even at 5K, despite this kind of really large chunk of cushioning on it. I also tested it for buggy running in the warm-up for that race, which um, it's, it's as good for as any other shoe, but probably wouldn't be your first choice for buggy runs. Um, but generally, uh, since then, I have run 5Ks in a couple of other carbon shoes. I'd probably rate it slightly better for that kind of distance. Uh, I actually finally ran a sub-16 in the Vaporfly, around 1552 uh, for my PB. And I've also run a 16 dead on the track in a kind of time trial um, with the New Balance R Fuel Cell RC Elite. Both of those shoes, I think, probably have a slight edge on the Alphafly for 5Ks, um, just because they're lighter, smaller, nimbler. Um, I think when you're really pushing that kind of pace to your, that kind of 5K race pace, uh, I do think they maybe have a slight edge. That said, I really don't think the um, Alphafly is a bad 5K shoe at all. I would use it again quite happily. It probably won't be my first choice because I think I'll be saving it for longer races, which we'll come on to. But yeah, it's um, it's just quite a lot of shoe for what is quite a short distance. You don't necessarily need that much cushioning um, for those shorter races. I've been running in the Nike Vaporfly for, well, I've had it for about eight months now. I've only actually raced in it three times. Um, but it's a shoe that I really, really wanted to try for quite, quite a long time. And I wasn't entirely sure if what people were saying about the shoe and, and how good it was was accurate i it just seemed to be far too good um from what everyone was saying but after having tried it i absolutely love it it's so conducive to running fast and um i've got three pbs in this shoe um the my 10k time my 10k pb now is 38 minutes 18 previously it was 39 minutes 58 so that's quite a big jump from my, my previous PV wearing this. I've only ever run up to 10K in this shoe. Last week, I tried the Alpha Fly for the first time in a 10K race in uh, Olympic Park in London. And uh, I was quite looking forward to trying the Alpha Fly because I love the uh, Vape Fly so much. I was hoping that this was gonna really deliver and maybe even be better than the experience I've had with the Vape Fly. What I found is that in the 10K, I actually, time-wise, I got a pretty similar time to my PB. So I think I ended up with 38 minutes 25. Um, and so I was fast. I, I definitely definitely delivered a race that I was pretty pleased with um, and managed to maintain a pace. But I did find that the difference between the two shoes and how they feel is quite noticeable. The Vaporfly, on one hand, it, it feels like, it feels light, but it also feels like it's propelling you forward. It's it's kind of pushing you on as, as you run and you just lurch forward and kind of pick up that momentum as you keep going. The Alpha Fly doesn't feel like that. It's got a um, much lower drop. And for me, it feels like it's a lot more kind of cushioning and just material on the bottom of the shoe. It didn't feel like I was running that fast when I was running it. It didn't feel like I was being propelled forward or it was any way, way, way near as bouncy as, as, as the Vape Fly. But um, it felt very comfortable. So over 10K, I think 
I much prefer the Vaporfly over 10k because it just feels faster and it just feels like I'm I'm going as quick as I can on that on that course. Whereas this I think feels more comfortable over um, running well over the 10k that I ran, but it just feels like it's more cushioned, it's more comfortable, and it's a very nice experience to run in. It just doesn't feel as fast. Um, the other thing that I noticed as well when running in the Alpha Fly is the pods at the front and this whole section did feel like it was touching a lot of the ground. It's quite a big section and I could feel my feet kind of squishing into the ground as I run, something that you don't feel with the with the vapor flies. So I think for me, the Alpha Fly, I really want to try it on a longer distance. Um, and I think over a marathon distance, it would it would be really good. It really come into its own. Um, vapor Fly, I've never actually done a marathon in the Vapor Fly either. So I've, I've, got, I've got a couple of, um, opportunities to test both these shoes out next year which um i really want to see which one delivers the best over that distance but for me i think this is better for short distance runs where you want a light really propulsive shoe and the alpha fly so far from the from the race that i've done in it feels like it's better suited to cushioning energy return over a longer distance because over the short distances it just doesn't feel as Chipper as the uh, as the vapor fly. So about to head out and give the Alpha Fly their first kind of real test over a distance, race distance longer than 5k or five miles. Uh, it's absolutely freezing, it's blowing a gale, but the rain stopped for now. I've got three laps of an airfield to do this half marathon. Um, I hope you all go okay. Uh, I was hoping to PV today, but maybe not. But I'm looking forward to giving them a long run out anyway. Um, so we'll let you know how that goes. So, so done. It's a big PV on a frankly awful day. It's a 112.16 for the half. Got really good out there, and I love the Alpha Flies, I have to say. Like, I know some people don't get on with them, but I absolutely adore them. I do think they're, for me, better than the Vaporfly. Um, anyway, I'll um, gonna need to warm up, and then we're gonna, um, I'll get back in the house, so our studio, and talk a bit more about how the race went in the shoes. But big thumbs up for the Alpha Fly from me, especially over half distance. So I did the half marathon at the weekend uh, at another airfield, lots of airfield running at the moment just because it's a good place to run COVID secure races. Uh, also just an immediate reaction and it went very well the race, I actually got the official time as a 1.12.12 uh, which is PB by over a minute um, and I won the race by a few seconds as well. Um, it wasn't really a sprint finish though because the headwind was so strong coming on the finish straight I had no idea where anyone was behind me I was just trying to stop running get to the end and stop um, but yeah I was really really pleased with how the race went obviously given the conditions and the athlete I think is a fantastic half marathon shoe for me so once I was kind of so straight into my stride when we started into a headwind and then kind of we got a bit of a tailwind around the corner um, and just hitting the stride kind of 320 325 per k uh, it just felt so comfortable and smooth in this shoe i really think it excels at that holding that kind of your fast race pace for kind of especially for half marathon the marathon holding it very comfortably i thought the shoe was like supportive cushioned protecting my legs um even as i started to get really tired towards the end where the final 2k was kind of into the headwind to finish and up a little hill i had a little bit of juice left to try and get home on pace even if i couldn't kick for a very you know any kind of sprint finish so yeah i was generally loved the shoe um, and it will 100% be my choice for half marathons uh, and marathons next year. However, I still don't think it's going to work for everyone. The guy in second, Rob Elmo, who's a really quick runner, uh, chose the Vaporfly for the race, and I think there'll be a lot of runners who will do that. Um, I don't know if it's just down to personal preference form, but I'm a heel striker, I have a high cadence, I don't have a particularly nice running form, um, and I do maybe get more efficiency gains from this shoe as a result. I don't know. But then obviously Elliot Kipchoge has pretty good form and he seems to like the shoe as well, uh, along with some other elites. So I can't really say what it is, but it definitely works for me. Um, I can see that it may not work for everyone. The Vaporfly is obviously still an amazing shoe, um, which I still have my half marathon, my, my full marathon PB and best marathon in as well. But next year, when it comes to my A races, my big marathons, I'm going to be using the Alpha Fly, And I do think it's just going to give me that little bit more, just mainly because of the kind of pop you get from these air zoom pods when it comes to your toe off the other thing i think it's worth saying about the half marathon i did it was a really wet day and the course had like some waterlogged sections actually one was just a huge puddle i had to plow through and there was no loss of grip or anything like that the airflow gripped really well i never even had a slight slip on a stride obviously going out at race pace um so that was really encouraging and i didn't really see much damage to the shoe afterwards it was a slightly rutted course in section a bit of gravel here and there i was actually a little bit worried i almost didn't use the shoes because i was afraid that i was going to rip them up a bit and i haven't really seen any like massive concerns on the front no damage that wasn't really there before i ran that half marathon so yeah that's a couple of good pluses and um this afternoon obviously did drain well because i was you know the shoe was submerged uh through that puddle three times because it was a three lap course and i didn't really have 
uh, any problems with water sticking in the foot. So that's another plus point. it guys that's our early impressions of the Alphafly as a race shoe over 5k 10k and half marathon distance um if you've used the shoe let us know we'd love to know other people's thoughts on it so far are you going to stick with the vaporfly i probably would say if you already have the vaporfly you don't necessarily need to upgrade to this but like for me it has been better for those longer races um let us know in the comments below or maybe you've gone away from nike entirely maybe the adios has attracted you with all the exciting results it's had with elites um or another brand super shoe let us know, like and subscribe, ring the little bell so you get told when our next video comes out, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.